Now, this was the race that made me respect ACC a lot more than I've done previously. I've been doing a lot of ACC on the channel recently, but it's been on PS5. And so many of you have been in the comments saying, no, that's all very well and cool doing it on the PS5. But really, you have to be driving ACC on PC. It's where you have the latest updates with the latest physics and the best graphical fidelity. So that's what I'm doing right here. ACC on my PC, my 3080 and my uh, gaming PC that I use to make videos. We're doing ACC at a Suzuka in a storm. Now, this was an absolutely fantastic race and... It really made me respect ACC as a driving simulator. The irony is, is that Gran Turismo 7 is called the real driving simulator. But as someone very cleverly put it in my comments, I feel like GT7 is kind of perhaps the real racing simulator. It gets down to brass tacks and racing. But this race in ACC, for me, is more about the driving. It's really, really wet and the conditions are going to change. As I was finding out using my V-Box Simics in the right hand side, um, looking at my predicted timing, the track I think was getting wetter, it was getting more difficult to drive and uh, I began to really struggle with the conditions as we're going to see and the way that the car would aquaplane, the, the way that the car would um, go deeper into braking zones and the only release and corner and grip when I came off the brake is very realistic actually from what I've experienced in karting I've done karting in torrential redder oh, wed redder? Wed <laughs> torrential weather, I'll put a video to that at the end of uh, end of this one but i do really think and what we're going to see in this race is that doing these kind of races in acc i think will skill you skill me up as a driver much more than gran turismo 7. gran turismo 7 gets you to the racing but i feel like the, I, I really in this race realize how deep the acc physics and driving model is you can see the car wanting to pirouette around the center of mass of the car so the weight transfer is very realistic. It handles like a real drive car. I actually feel like these sort of races, absolutely great practice if you have a real drive car at home and then you drive back one day and it's really, really wet and you're gonna have those moments. It's very realistic in that way. So you can see here, we're losing a lot of speed down the straights, not so wide, maybe in two high gears, but the conditions are gonna get worse and it's get wor wor gonna get more worse. Can't speak today. And it's also gonna get darker as well. So we're gonna see have a look at the back end of this car, have a look at the way that it wants to step out and then see what I'm doing with the throttle, how I'm trying to compensate there. I'm trying to work out how the car wants to handle here and I'm also trying to work out where the maximum levels of grip are. Now it's going to be really apparent for turn one, we're, we're going to come in very hot, plus 200 kilometers an hour and there's not a lot of runoff. As you'll know in the drive, if you just kind of straddle the wheel into the gravel then that's it, you're off. So let's see how we'll deal with this because aquaplaning is going to be a thing. So I'm on the inside of the track Maybe more grip, I don't know. In real life, you want to be off the rubber section of the trap because it's more, it's more slippy. So let's see here at turn one, 212 kilometers an hour braking. And yes, there's some aquaplaning. So we managed to keep it out of the wall, but you could feel that now, as someone who's carted and in torrential conditions with aquaplaning, that is a very realistic sensation. When you aquaplane, there's nothing you can really do other than try not to spin. You, you lose all of your braking ability. There's, there's no way to slow down. And what you don't really want to do is, is go into a spin. So I was pleasantly surprised to kind of see how that felt on AC. Now, the other thing I want to say about why this race made me respect ACC so much more is that this race was just way more exciting than the AI races in iRacing. And a lot of that, I think, is down to the weather. It just is a lot more emotional, visceral, engaging, than the AI racing AI races and AI racing AI races are quite good but I feel like for the first time genuinely for the first time I'm preferring ACC over AI racing and as someone who's streamed AI racing for two years loads of special events bought way too much content that pains me but it's true I was enjoying this more and I'm really 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 engaged because I'm respecting the driving model it's, it's kind of it, it's very realistic and I feel like teaching me um, how to drive these sort of cars and how to become better drivers. So you can see now it's getting dark and I think every lap is getting wetter as well. Trying to lay down the power here. We're going to come to attack from behind maybe because we're in very high gears. The traction control is doing bits, by the way, trying to um, not spin out those tyres. Trying to keep an R8 at bay. Let's see if we can do it. And have a look at the transformation now at night. Again, you know, for me... This is arguably looking better than Gran Turismo 7. I can't believe I'm saying this. 
But you're going to see as we go around into the Casio Triangle, the Ferris wheel and the way it lights up the track. I mean, absolutely. This this feels like. I don't know if you've ever driven down roads late at night at this time of day in the rain and looked off into the fields and thought, oh, what's it like in that field right now? I'm getting the same vibe here. I don't know if I can explain it, but the colour palette and everything is just kind of that oppressiveness. It feels oppressive. It feels like in a very powerful GT3 car in dangerous conditions at night. It, it's really doing it for me. And there's a Ferris wheel, um, which you can see all around the track. So I'm actually loving it. The reflections are great. This looks a lot better than, rem than I remember ACC looking. I'm sure they must have updated the graphics. This is pretty phenomenal right now. So trying to avoid the acoplaning here. Oh, we get a little bit of acoplaning right at the end. Keep it kind of out of most of the gravel this time. But yeah, trying to learn what we can in turn one there. We're up to P15, but the conditions are really tricky as we lose a back end there. Very real wheel drive behavior. And now the whole complexion of the race has changed. It's no longer really so much a race now it's me against the elements and that's what's really engaging me again the car snaps and we spin we lose it what we're going to do here as the ai cars wait that is very unrealistic i've never known any racing driver in real life who doesn't see that as an opportunity to gain a position but there we go so we spun the car in the s's and uh, as we're going to see in this video that's it's not only me that's going to be spinning you can see the ai is spinning as well which is very exciting. See, so at the Ferris wheel reflecting there off the tarmac. That is, uh, that is quite cool. So going side by side with is that a BMW or is that a Lexus? I think on our outside, the RCF. Going to get past us. We'll see if we can try and dive up the inside here at Degna 1. No, way too far back. Might be able to line something up with the hairpin. But we're struggling here to maintain the grip. And uh, laying down the power has become really, really, really... Difficult. Look at the race logic, just constantly red most of the time. Apart from when it's green like now, obviously. Context curse. Go up the inside of the RCF and just about get it turned in. Can we get the uh, R8 on exit? Not really, but it looks like the R8 is struggling a little bit more with the power than we saw with the AI cars earlier. Maybe they're running different traction control or something. And this, you know, the, the uh, exit of the hairpin up to speed becomes an actual really tricky piece of tarmac. See if we can do something got the inside spoon here with the R8. Try and stick our nose up the inside and he kind of moves out the way. That Oh, we lose the car again. Completely lost. And uh, this is quite addictive for me because I really want to master the conditions. And when I get my teeth stuck in something like this that's fun, engaging and difficult, that's kind of the uh, holy trinity for me. And that's when I really get stuck in. So I think you're going to see me doing a lot more of these ACC races. We're down to 28th place now. Can we catch up with the cars ahead and what is going to be the last lap as we go over the line? Coming into 130R, just about getting it done. I'm going to try and catch up with that pack. Cassio Triangle, any acclimating here? This is... No, just... Oh, and there we go. Look at that. The Aston spins. The Aston spins on the Cassio Triangle. That is... Very cool to see from AI car. I'm not sure why I got a penalty there, but we did. We'll take it. And uh, now we've got to get through turn one, not aqua plane, and try and catch up with the cars ahead. I mean, this is for a random single player AI race. This is, this is quite extraordinary. Let's see how we do. Oh, you can see there's some more aqua plane, and you can hear it on the tyres, but we, we don't really lose too much time. I think we've actually gained on the pack. It's like a Lambo's up next but yeah and this was really tricky last time through the s's conditions feel like they're getting wetter and they're just very difficult to deploy the power even though we've got traction control on seven out of 11. see how we do here there's a lot of cars that look like they're struggling maybe a uh, ferrari holding up the pack can we go up the inside of the lambo here we'll think about it no just listen to uh all the sights and sounds of ACC. Look at the reflections. I mean, the game is absolutely phenomenal right now. It looks even better in person, I can tell you. Bouncing over the curb. Good exit out of Degna 2, let's see. 
Not bad. In second gear. So not too high a gear, probably. See if we can stick up the inside of the Lambert. Oh, tricky. Might go for it. Yes, we do. That's one position. Oh, a little bit of contact there with the R8. And uh, we're definitely sticking with him much more than we were able to the air cars earlier. Oh, limit of grip. You can see another snatch there, and the Lambo's right up behind us. Can't even get over to the right side of the track here at speed. We'll chop across the Lambo. See, the Audi ahead of us has a little moment. It is really wet now. Try and lay down the power. First gear. ACC sounds so good, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've got to be honest. I don't think you can really have this kind of experience on PS5. Try and go 130R, the fireworks off in distance. We might go a little bit wide here, trying to go around the outside. Just about sort of keep it on track. Let's see if we can dive up the inside of the R8. We're going to go for it. Right on the limit there. You can see the ABS doing its thing. And what a race it's been. And yeah, I'm I've absolutely engrossed in this race. And I'm, I want to do it again and again and again. I want to be starting from the back and seeing how high can I finish. I want to be doing it with no uh, spins. He'll be sighing at the end of the race there because it's quite stressful. But yeah, ACC driving great feeling great, looking great. I think I need to be doing more ACC and I need to be becoming better at ACC so we can really get into the to the online stuff. But I feel like it's a new journey for us in ACC. It's not like GT7 where we can just jump into the top split dailies and compete. Here it's, we've got to start from the bottom again really and I'm looking forward to that. So really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you did. Let me know what you want to see me do in ACC. I'll see you. I'll see you next time.